There are just three races remaining in the 2025 Formula One season and with the aerodynamic test restrictions and a cost cap in force, you wouldn't expect there to be any upgrades on display in Las Vegas. In fact, there were no upgrades last time out whatsoever for the first time since these rules were introduced in 2022. So this will be a very short episode of Tech Talk except not so much because there are upgrades which is fascinating except some of those upgrades are not exactly new bits but they're bits that are new in the configuration that they're in you'll see what i mean i'm going to start off by showing you the front wing of the red bull at the italian grand prix formula one's fastest circuit the temple of speed monza but is it formula one's lowest drag circuit perhaps not anymore Let's have a look. So this is the front wing that Red Bull turned up and started the Italian Grand Prix weekend with. And this is in fr just before free practice one, we got this footage. Now I wanna draw your attention to the upper element of the front wing here on the Red Bull. You can see it's quite chunky. It's got a, an upwardly swoopy bit, I think we'll have to call that. It doesn't stick up and quite a large second highest element here to take a look at. The overall nose concept and wing concept is the same. However, coming into the Las Vegas Grand Prix weekend, have a look at the front wing. It's a completely different shape. You can see the element here, the second element, shall we call it, slightly different twist on the wing element itself. But look at the top element, completely different. And it's trimmed down quite significantly. You can see where a wing would have been along the top here. And then you can see it's just been trimmed down all the way along that top. And I do mean trimming. This isn't about going down to your local barbers and having a haircut, the little I know about that. You will be able to see on a number of cars how teams have turned up and chopped down existing wing designs. And to explain a little bit more about what that's all about, we do need to come back to those topics of the aerodynamic test restrictions, but particularly the cost cap. Every Formula One team at the moment is limited on how much money they can spend per season. And at this point of the season, developing and manufacturing a new part as well as putting it through all that aerodynamic testing is going to have an impact on next year's car development so teams are trying to get away from spending the additional money by raiding the parts bin essentially and chopping bits off existing parts to make them work on the current car without having to make a completely new part from scratch it's essentially not quite digging around in a scrapyard to find a new bit because this is formula one and everything is high precision but it is using existing resources in a very clever way. And to find out a little bit more about that, Paul Monaghan is with Anna Francis down in the pit lane. So what we've done, we can take the existing flaps. Um, it's two elements. It's the third and fourth element of the front wing between the fixed parts. And we can effectively trim those two whilst keeping it legal. And that's what we've uh, brought here to effectively just shed some load at the front of the car to balance um, what is expected to be a pretty low level of uh, rear wing for this event. And what kind of process is involved when you're modifying a part for a track like this? Well, the first thing you have to do is kind of take a stab at the rear wing you expect to race, then the aero balance you expect to race, then we'll take a punt at the flap geometry, and on Sunday I'll tell you whether we were right or wrong. So uh, it's... Uh, it's a reasonably well-established process. You know, we're, we're, it's not our first rodeo, as it were. So hopefully we're not a mile off on this, but we'll be, we'll be okay. Was this a kind of long pre-planned sort of um, thing to do for this track, or was it more of a reaction to recent races? Um, it's a bit of a reaction to recent races, really, because if you think this wing's been on a car, Monza, Baku, uh, Silverstone probably as well, I think, from the declarations. So... Well, you take a stab when we do a front wing to say, right, it's got to cover a, a reasonable range of rear wings and get these kind of error balances. Um, but because it's a make from, then we can effectively trickle along some, um, some existing front wing flap specs and then trim it to, to get this one here. Las Vegas is a very, very fast motor racing circuit. Those big, long straights, the Las Vegas Strip, also joined together by some very slow speed corners. It's a particularly interesting track, but before we get into the track specifics in terms of its layout, you have to consider 
that it's a race run in November in the middle of the Nevada desert in the middle of the night. Now you may think desert, oh, it's gonna be hot and sunny. No, it's nighttime, so certainly not sunny, but it's also extremely cold by Formula One standards. In fact, it's the coldest race on the Formula One calendar. And that has some real implications on how the cars are set up. And Paul Monaghan has a bit more to say about that and why he's wearing a brand new coat. What would you say are the specific challenges of racing here? The fact that we're shivering gives you a very large hint. Um, keeping the tyres warm, stop them falling apart, graining, whatever you want to call it, is a, is a big old challenge here. Um, believe it or not, keeping the engine warm is actually quite tricky because we've just uh, not long been to Mexico where it, there's not enough air to cool the thing. Uh, done some hot races such as Austin, where I remember basking in the sunshine, and here we are shivering. So uh, you've got to close the car right up, keep the aero working, um, try and look after the tyres, and we'll see who prevails on Sunday. Uh, you touched on it there, but obviously we have cooler temperatures here. Um, do you generally need to run a little bit more wing to sort of generate more tyre temperature? And how do you manage that trade-off with the drag on the straights? Well, in preparation to come to a circuit such as this one, we have wonderful simulation tools, clever people to put the right data in, as well as interpret what comes out. So really, we'll look at what offers us, we think, the best overall package to run here. So we've made our choices, and the opposition have made, in some cases, similar, in some cases, slightly different. And you can look to your left and right to see different solutions. It's fine. So based upon our simulation work, we come here with what we think is going to be our best wing. As you say, the question of how you treat the tyres is not only down to the wing. Well, that's going to be our philosophy. Um, and we'll see how we get on. If we simply can't make it work in P1, we are allowed to change the wing and we will. Simple as that. Absolutely fascinating stuff there from Paul, as always. And well, Red Bull were in a bit of an interesting situation in free practice one, at least. Yuki Tsunoda, who is very much acting as the tail gunner to Max Verstappen for the rest of this season, because Red Bull are out of the Constructors' Championship because McLaren have already won it. However, Max Verstappen can still mathematically at least win the Drivers' Championship and Red Bull's kind of got to put everything into that and Yuki Tsunoda should really be helping Verstappen to do that and in fact he is, though we did have the very unusual situation of Tsunoda being quicker than Verstappen in free practice. And the reason for that is I think Red Bull, as we sort of heard hinted at there by Paul, are playing around with the aerodynamic setup of the two cars. Yuki Tsunoda had a very different speed profile on the straights compared to Verstappen, suggesting to me that one of the cars is running in a higher downforce configuration to the other, which is running in a lower drag configuration, giving you a clear speed difference. Now, I wonder if we are gonna see some different variants of front wing used on both of the Red Bull as the weekend progresses. But if Tsunoda keeps on showing this much speed, he really could be a significant factor for the battle with McLaren. And on the topic of McLaren, this is not the best circuit for the papaya or is it orange racing cars. Now let's start off in the same way and take a look at the front wing used by McLaren at Monza earlier in the year. And again, let's take a look at the trailing edge of the front wings and you can see the, uh, the upper two elements, that's really where we're looking at in terms of the downforce levels of these wings. This is the Monza specification. Now, let me bring you to the specification used here at Las Vegas. Notice anything different? And yes, I know it's a different angle, but I just wanted to highlight something which you've probably already spotted. And it's just here. It's this big cutout in the upper surface of the front wing. Now remember earlier on I said this is about precision, it's not just lopping off a bit of the front wing, even though essentially that's what they're doing. You can actually see how precisely this wing has been cut. It's not just taking a power tool and cutting a shape out of it. The teams actually have to go and take these shapes, develop those shapes in CFD and in the wind tunnel and work out exactly how to cut it out. It's not quite a case of putting a dotted line and a pair of scissors on the wing and cutting it off that way, but I think the process is essentially like that. How deep can you cut into a wing element without exposing too much of the core? Well, quite a lot by the look of it on the upper edge of the McLaren. Looking at the rear wing as well is worth doing on the McLaren here. This is the wing used at Monza. You can see that very dished central section. Remember that, because you are gonna see it again in Las Vegas. But look at this upper element of the wing. You can see very clearly straight topped wing element. You can see the bottom as well, 
very much at a straight top. And let's see it from a different angle here. I'm showing you this angle for a reason because I want to come back to this exact angle from Las Vegas. Take a look at the wing there. Now, let me show you what they're running in Las Vegas because it is very visually different. Look at that. They have taken the power tools out again, haven't they? Look at this. The whole top section is cut away very clearly. Big chunk missing out of the upper element of the wing. That's essentially to reduce aerodynamic drag, but they're trying to do it in as efficient way as possible. But also they've been playing around with the leading edge of this upper element as well to my eye. I think there's been some changes made there. McLaren really doing all they can to get drag off the car, sort out their straight line speed and try and be competitive around the Las Vegas circuit. But it's not as simple as that. So to find out more, Anna Francis headed down to the McLaren garage. So relatively minor stuff compared with some of the uh, upgrades we made earlier on in the season, but we've got some um, rear wing flap trim options and then some front, uh, front wing trim options to suit to keep the balance of the car working well. So we're going to run the car um, in P1. We know it's cold, not going to be a lot of grip, but we'll look at ourselves, we'll look at the other teams, listen to what the driver's got to say, and then really the decision on our, our flap will be based on top speed and the driver's feedback. Are these new parts or are they older parts so that have been modified? They're parts that already existed but that have been trimmed to a different profile. So stuff that we had around us that we were able to utilise at, at short notice. Well, that's really interesting. And it's notable here, just taking a look at Lando Norris's car in the garage earlier on today. He had the Monza specification wing on the car at the start of free practice one. Uh, they probably chopped and changed throughout the rest of the day as the sessions went on. Oscar Piastri, of course, had that trimmed wing. And I think the two drivers still finding the car very different to their demands. You can probably see a previous episode of Tech Talk where we dived into that a little bit more with the McLaren team. Really interesting to see how McLaren is also working with its car for the very specific demands of this Las Vegas circuit. That long old straight down the Las Vegas strip is challenging quite a lot of teams and we are seeing different versions of the car setups. Do you go as low downforce as possible, lower downforce than Monza as we've seen on Oscar Piastri's car? Or do you go for a little bit more of a high downforce setup like we've seen some of the other teams doing up and down the pit lane in order to keep the tyres alive? And to talk a little bit more about that trade-off, Anna is still in the McLaren garage. Obviously massive high speeds, um, but also some very slow corners. So the big challenge is finding something that the driver's going to enjoy driving, that getting around those slow corners while still making it down the straight in front of people or being able to take people is the real challenge of this circuit. And there are always a lot of compromises that you have to make here. Drivers are not going to be happy, but the way to get the fastest car is not necessarily in this, at this track to keep the drivers happy. Um, you touched on it a little bit there, but obviously we have cooler temperatures here. Um, do you find that you need to run a bit more wing to sort of generate more tyre temperature? And then what is the trade-off in terms of the drag on the straights with that? Sure, it's, that, it's the balance between the, the drag and the cornering speed. I'd say tyre temperatures a little bit more influenced by how we set our brake ducts up and how hot we're running the rear brake, front and rear brakes. Um, to be honest, the... The drag is going to be defined by how how quick everyone else is and where we think the opportunity is to overtake. So the tyres and the drag are actually quite independent at this circuit. So there we have it, even with just three races left of the 2025 season, if you don't count the sprint in Qatar, it's going to be a really, really hard fought technical battle all the way to the end of not just this championship, but also to the end of this generation of Formula One car before the biggest ever changes to Formula One's technical regulations are introduced at the start of next year. And all of those changes, all of that development going into these cars is taking away from those cars. And it will be fascinating to see who's gonna hold on to the very last moment. Will it be McLaren fighting off the threat of Max Verstappen finally, or will the Flying Dutchman and his Red Bull team managed to upset all of those wearing papaya. We'll find out soon enough.